what is going on guys it's Justin from the J Media back with another video so I know some of you guys have been waiting patiently for the turbo build to start on my Mitsubishi Lancer um, so over the past few months I've been you know doing research on what I can do to build the car as well as what parts I'll need um, so there's a few routes you could take and uh, if you just wanted to you know do it for like a, a budget build I guess to boost the car uh, you could either get an OEM rally art setup or the OEM EVO 10 turbo setup. So I went with the OEM rally art turbo setup. Uh, so what I'll be doing is I'm going to show you guys everything I've collected so far. I believe I pretty much have everything needed to boost the car. Um, since I'm boosting the car, I decided to take the extra mile as well and get some off-the-market parts. Um, of course, if you guys are trying to you know keep it on a budget, um, like I said, the cheapest way is probably to find a used rally art turbo setup. Um, you can get the turbo, the um, intercooler, intercooler piping, all that good stuff uh, for under a thousand dollars. So I picked my mind for about eight hundred dollars. Uh, but like I said, over you know the course of time, I was trying to pick up parts, aftermarket parts, so I could change it out to uh, to customize it and make it my own. So could that kind of added up over time. Um, but yeah, there's also a company by the name of uh, Road Race Motorsports who makes a turbo kit for the Lancers, but they are really expensive. I think it's like three or four thousand dollars. Uh, so again, you know, there's a bunch of people who boosted their Mitsubishi Lancers on the Rally Art Turbo setup or Evo 10 setup. So let me just show you guys what I have currently. All right, so here is my turbo. So one thing you have to note is whenever you pick out a turbo setup, you want to make sure you have a good turbo. Make sure the shaft play is pretty good. So all in all, this is pretty good turbo. Uh, pick it up from a fellow Mitsubishi Lancer owner by the name of John Bass or Jonathan Bass. He's a pretty OG guy who has turboed his Lancer before, as well as sell a lot of OEM Mitsubishi parts. Uh, I believe he's located over in Florida. So turbo, as well as all that over there, is all the OEM stuff. And then like I said, I pick up a bunch of other aftermarket stuff as well over here, which I'll show you guys in a bit. Um, I'm really trying my best to document this along the way as I go because uh, this is all new to me as well. I'm not a mechanic by trade, so um, you know all this isn't easy for me as well. But what I did was I did a lot of research on forums as well as talking to other Mitsubishi Turbo Lancers. Um, there's a great Facebook page by the name of Mitsubishi Lancer Turbo Club um, on Facebook that you know a lot of other Turbo Lancers share their knowledge on there. So great resource. Um, there's also you know a bunch of forums like Evo M. Um, and other Lancer forums as well online that you can read and get information from. So that was what I was doing. I wanted to do a lot of research so that, you know, uh, I know what I'm getting myself into. So I wanted to, like I said, document this build along the way and share it with you guys who might be interested in turboing your Lancer in the future. All right, so before I show you guys everything I have over here, like I said, it's quite a mess of parts that I've been collecting for the past few months. I'm gonna go through this checklist which I made myself um, so again, you know, I went on, you know, online from forums from Mitsubishi uh, Lancer Facebook group, um, and then there's also uh, Rick Rally uh, inspired. He actually made a guide as well on his website. So I was trying to put a part, I guess, put this list together, just because there's information here and there, but no one have actually made a full list. And I'm trying to make a video as well. Like I said, uh, some of you guys might be already turbo, so great for you guys, but if some of you guys who are not turbo and you are thinking of turboing your car, like I say, I'm trying to do my best to document this journey. So make sure to hit that subscribe so you know when new videos are out. Um, whenever we do the install, I'll be trying to document as much as I can as well. So let me just dive straight into this list and uh, kind of read out uh, what's needed. So again, if you guys didn't know, my car is a 2015 Mitsubishi Lancer GT. So it has a 2.4 liter 4 V12 engine. Uh, I know some of the other Lancers, like the ES models, SE models, have the 4B11 2 liter engine. Um, so you could use, again, both the Rally Art or OEM Evo 10 setup. Um, it's gonna work the same. And I currently, mine has the CVT transmission. Uh, so again, you could run both setups on CVT or manual transmission. Uh, the main difference will be with the CVT transmission, it does have cooling issues. So you do have to do stuff to kind of prevent that from failing. Um, I know some of you guys might have asked me like have I thought of swapping out a 5 speed in the future so that's something I definitely have thought about as well um, so the plan for right now is just to boost the car um, I'm not going for crazy power or anything like that uh, I might I, will, I did think of building the block as well but for right now I just want to boost the car and enjoy it on a conservative tune nothing too crazy 
Uh, but yeah, let me go ahead and read out my list over here. Okay, so first thing I wrote here is recommended turbo setup for Mitsubishi Lancer CVT. Um, so a lot of guys are saying, you know, on a stock block, it's recommended to run only five to seven pounds of boost. Uh, I mean, of course you can run more boost, but you know, if you want to keep it safe, five to seven pounds of boost is recommended. Um, and then unless your tuner tells you to turn up the boost, that's, that's something else, you know. Um, but that's what the recommended levels are at. Uh, if you have a manual transmission, you could rip, run about eh, 7 to 10 pounds of boost pretty safely. Uh, again, you know, if your tuner tells you that, oh, I think you're pretty safe, you can turn up the boost, uh, feel free to do so. Um, so let me read my list. I have a checklist. So each time I buy each part, I actually kind of want to check it off. Uh, so the first thing is you could use an OEM RA, which is the OEM Rally Art or Evo 10 Turbo setup. Um, so this is what I have over here, the turbo as well as the manifold right here. That's off the Mitsubishi Rally Art. Um, after I read out this list, I'm going to be putting everything on the ground so I'll show you exactly what I have here. Uh, so we have OEM Evo 10 setup, OEM turbo setup from the Evo 10 or Rally Art. Um, you can use the wastegate, so the Rally Art or Evo 10 turbo stop wastegate will not work because there's too much boost. Um, and an aftermarket uh, rally art wastegate will be needed or you can get like a Kunigawa adjustable turbo actuator. Uh, so that's actually what I got. So basically with that, I can kind of turn down the boost because on the stock setup, it's going to be running too much boost and I definitely don't want to blow my motor. Um, and then since I have the CVD transmission, the next thing is a transmission cooler. So on my Lancer GT, it comes stock with one transmission cooler. I know some Mitsubishi Lancers don't come stock with it. So definitely recommend it. Uh, I got another transmission cooler as well as transmission fans. So a little extra, but I have two transmission cooler and two transmission fans just to keep the CVD transmission running, you know, smooth. Uh, I actually got this tip from a fellow Turbo Lancer owner as well with the CVD transmission by the name of Scott Cowden. Um, he's been running his car on the racetrack six to seven times a year. So he actually tracks the car hard again on a turbo CVT setup. Um, so. You could, you know, from the fans, you could get it from Mishimoto. They make a great one, uh, but I got it with a different brand. So I'll show you guys all that later. Um, and then, yeah, any aftermarket one with fans are fine. And then you require custom brackets that are pretty simple to do. And like I said, you could double up. You could have just one transmission cooler, one fan, or you could double up, which is what I have. Two transmission coolers, two fans. Um, and then a boost control is needed as well. Um, so like I said, the Kunigawa Turbo Actuator, what it does is it turns down the boost to 4.4 PSI uh, but what I'll be doing is with the manual boost controller you want to turn it up a little bit like I said with the CVT you can run 5 to 7 pounds of boost um, if you want to stay at 4.4 pounds PSI of uh, boost which is what this stock uh, Kunigawa Actuator would do then it's fine but if you want to turn it up a little bit then get a manual boost controller so I got that as well um, and then for a blower valve you can either use the OEM blow valve or you can use aftermarket. But if you use an aftermarket, it has to be a recirculating blow valve. Uh, recirculating meaning it's recirculated back to the uh, intake and you can't release the atmosphere. So in layman terms, I know sometimes you guys hear a lot of like turbo cars with the mmch, mmch, like blow off sounds. They sound great, but unfortunately in our setup, it doesn't work. Um, it can't work. So. I did get an aftermarket one as well, but it does have to be recirculating. And then you need a blow valve, return hose, uh, you need an Inu cooler. So cheapest is to go to OEM setup. Um, but again, I, I went with the aftermarket one. And of course, Inu cooler piping. Uh, so the upper Inu cooler piping can be an OEM setup, but the lower Inu cooler piping, apparently it needs to be custom. So we'll see. Um, we'll see about that. I haven't got to installing it, so I'm not sure. And then for intake, uh, same thing, you could use the OEM setup. Um, they say the OEM intake tube with aftermarket air filter is the cheapest, uh, but any Evo 10 or rail yard intake would work. So on the Mitsubishi Lancer setup, we have our batteries in the engine bay. Uh, if you are running an Evo 10 intake, then you have to relocate it to the trunk because that's what the Evo 10s have. Uh, if you run the rail yard setup, which is what I have, you can leave your battery in the, in the engine bay because there's a work around it. Uh, but unfortunately, I decided to make things harder for myself and uh, I'm running an EVO 10 intake setup, which I'll show you guys later. Uh, so I do have to relocate my battery to the trunk. That's optional, that's not a must. Um, and then we have the map sensor. So uh, Rally Art or EVO 10 OEM 
map sensor or the Omni 3 bar map sensor works. Uh, so it replaces the stock 1 bar sensor in the intake manifold and then injectors. So you can either use the OEM EVO 10 injectors or the Rallyard injectors. Uh, and on the guide it says uh, they recommend to buy, I guess if you buy it used, recommend to get them clean. Um, so I did get the Rallyard injectors. And then also the fuel pump, you can use a stock OEM Rallyard or EVO 10 fuel pump. Uh, or if you want off the market, you can go with AEMs. 50-120 uh, fuel pump uh, for wide band they recommended getting the AM wide band so it tracks your air fuel ratio which is the air fuel ratio gauge that's what I got uh, and then a boost gauge as well I also got an AM boost gauge uh, spark plugs this is something I haven't got yet but again spark plugs you could pretty much go to any auto store to get that um, it really depends on your vehicle so again I don't know the specifics I would say best is to check your tuner or shop is going to do the install I'm not a mechanic by trade so I'm just going off whatever I have listed here all this is new to me as well and let's see here and then we have the TD04 or TD05 oil water fittings kit uh, depending on what turbo you have off the rally art or the EVO 10 uh, so basically what it is is you need some custom oil lines Again, I got mine by the name uh, from the same guy uh, who I got my OEM Rally Art Turbo Kit. Um, he goes by Jonathan Bays. So he pretty much put it together, uh, AN fittings and all that good stuff for the oil lines. Uh, you can piece it together yourself as well, but you know, I decided to go an easier route. Um, so for the oil fittings, I can kind of read it out to you guys. It might not make any sense, but I got this, all this information off another Turbo Lancer owner, uh, Tony as well. So uh, it says oil fitting lines 8 AN well on bung rally art turbo or a 10 AN line well on bung if you have an EVO turbo. And this is for the oil return line to the oil pan. And a 36 inch braided stainless steel uh, 4 AN hose and a 4 AN male fitting to a 3 8 NPT adapter going to oil feed. For your return line, you need an 8 AN hose for rally art turbo, two feet long, cut to size, 8 AN 45 degree bulk head fitting that will go on oil pan. 90 degree 8 AN fitting and turbo AN 2 bolt flange. So all the necessary stuff are like your bolts, your gaskets, your you know all the small little stuff. Um, I don't actually have that yet but then as I install you know I'm sure I might need some of these stuff. And then some stuff that are optional as well that I decided to get as well since I'm doing this turbo build. Again it's optional it's not a must. Um, so an EVO 10 intake manifold uh, this which is what I went with, the OEM EVO 10 intake manifold. Um, the Rally Art, sorry not Rally Art, the Mitsubishi Lancer one works, but it's a plastic intake manifold and I think it doesn't look good and you know I'm afraid it might overheat over time. So I went with the EVO 10 intake manifold which is made of metal. Um, you need 12 millimeter bolts because the stock Lancer bolts are 10 millimeters and they don't fit, it's different bolt size. And then with the EVO 10 intake manifold, I also got EVO 10 throttle body. So the throttle body in the EVO 10 is bigger than the stock Lancer one. Um, but pretty much with the EVO 10 throttle body, you do have the, I guess if you have the EVO 10 intake manifold, you need the EVO 10 throttle body as well, so it fits well. Um, I think another Turbo Lancer owner, he used the 4G69 throttle body, so something bigger, uh, more airflow. And then you can also get EVO 10 injectors. I didn't do that, I just stuck with the stock Rallyer ones. Uh, you can get EVO 10 cams, so that's something, even if you're not turbo, if you are in any build, um, I heard of guys dropping in EVO 10 cams, which is what I got, the OEM EVO 10 cams. I'll be dropping that into the car, and um, yeah, that. so I guess it's not technically, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not doing any machine work, I'm not trying to build the block or anything, but I guess EVO cams, you can kind of consider it part of it. So EVO 10 cams, you can also get EVO 10 cam springs, I didn't do that, um, and then I switch out my radiator. So if you guys know the Mitsubishi Lancer one is a plastic radiator. Um, I switched out to a full size aluminum radiator by Koyo Rad. So one of the best in the game. Um, you know, again, great Japanese JDM brand. Um, and then let's see what else. A Rally Art Turbo Manifold. So that's something I really want to get, but I haven't got. Um, so I still have the stock Rally Art Turbo Manifold. So when I bought the Rally Art Turbo setup, came with the Turbo Manifold. Um, Works great, but apparently they are pretty notorious for cracking over time with heat. So thankfully mine, uh, I don't see any issues with it. But in the future, if I do want to upgrade, there's one company who makes the turbo manifold. 
and they go by the name of Strictly Modified. Uh, they are pretty expensive. So one thing to note, Reliard Turbo Manifold and the Evo 10 Turbo Manifold, they are different. So uh, if you st stick with the Evo 10 Turbo setup, make sure to go for the Evo 10 Turbo Manifold. If you go for the Reliard setup, then stick to that. Um, yeah, the reason I didn't jump the gun on the Strictly Modified Turbo Manifold, which is apparently the only aftermarket one I see, is because they cost $1,000 for just the Turbo Manifold. They look beautiful, but maybe in the future. Um, and then also going to be getting some heat wrap as well to wrap the turbo manifold just because you know uh, With turbo is more heat and I just want to make sure it stays cool And then you can also get Cosworth thicker head gaskets. Uh, I didn't go ahead and do that And then for tuning you do need a few stuff for tuning uh, you need your ECU flash software you need your Evo scan software um, and then you also need the uh, Tectrix 2.0 cable so all that thankfully I already have just because um, I, I had my car tuned before it was boosted. So um, yeah, Evo Scan costs about 25 bucks for the software. Uh, you need a win Windows laptop to tune it. Tectrix cable, you can find it for about 200 bucks. Um, but like I said, I'll be doing tuning. Uh, I don't know anything about tuning, but there are two guys who are really experienced with tuning, both NA Lancers and Turbo Lancers. Um, the first one is Rick. Uh, Barrera with uh, Rally Inspired and the second one is Hiram Tuning um, otherwise known as Hiram the producer uh, so both are great guys when I was on my NA setup I had uh, Rick with Rally Inspired tune me um, but then after speaking to a couple of Turbo Lancer owners they highly recommend Hiram as well I, I know both of them do great work uh, but I'm deciding I'm going to try Hiram so he besides you know tuning he also does the install he has a lot of experience he's actually from Puerto Rico uh, so that's pretty cool um, in the future, the plan is to actually, um, you know, fly him over from Puerto Rico and uh, pretty much we'll get the install done, tuning done and all that. So if you're not able to do that, you can also do remote tuning with both Rick and Hiram, uh, which means you can do an e-tune. Over the internet, you can send each other emails or you can do a video call and do tuning. Uh, of course, they charge for their tuning services. And then to monitor, uh, you know, your, your boost levels and all that, you need a boost gauge. Um, you need a wide band, FU ratio, and then uh, yeah, pretty much those two I got it from AEM. Um, and then for tuning, some people say that it really depends on your year of Lancer, because certain years they say you can tune it on a stock ECU. Some say you have to get a EVO 10 ECU to tune it and override it. Um, so I spoke to my tuner and he does say that I, you know, I'm able to be tuned on my stock ECU. Otherwise, I'll say again, check with your tuner. Uh, depends on your model, your engine, your the year and make of your model and all that. Definitely check your tuner. So I think that pretty much uh, sums up my list. I have a pretty lengthy two-page list that I've been compiling and revising over a couple few months. Um, I might have bored you guys with all that talk, but what I'll probably do is I might separate all, showing you guys all the turbo parts to a separate video, just because this video has been pretty long. So if you guys want to stay tuned for that, make sure to leave a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe so you know when the channel's out. What I'll do is I'll have all these Turbo stuff in a separate playlist on my YouTube channel. Probably going to name it Turbo Lancer Build. Um, just so you guys can watch from the very beginning. Uh, I had a few videos out. So the first video was when I first got my OEM Rally Art Turbo setup, all the OEM stock parts. And then all along the few months, I, I ordered you know parts online and they kept coming in. So I made separate videos of unboxing those Turbo parts as well. So. Make sure you stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the next video.